us this morning are on the two battleground states. We are going to look at these two battleground states to take us through these states, Jammu and Kashmir and Jharkhand. Special panel with me here in the studio with me, Manisha Priyam. She is one of the country's uh, most senior academics and she will give us her take on what she believes is a state. She's also tracked very closely the state of Jharkhand. Manini Chatterjee of The Telegraph, National Affairs Editor of The Telegraph, will give us her take on this big election day. Dhananjay Joshi of Cicero, who's done the poll for us, the exit po come post poll for Jharkhand, he will give us a sense of how the pollsters are looking at this result. Also with me is Anuradha Basin from the Kashmir Times. She will give us her perspective, particularly from Jammu. And Gohar Gilani also joins us from the valley. So we will have reports from across both the valley and Jharkhand over the next few hours. Let's also go straight to our correspondence first to tell you what is at stake in this election. Remember, this is a critical election for Jammu and Kashmir as well as Jharkhand. So before we come to the studio, I want to go to our correspondence. Remember, it's early in the morning and uh, I have Smita Sharma joining me there from Srinagar. Also from uh, uh, Rachi is Rohit and uh, from Jammu is Ankit Tyagi. But first you, Smita, it's a very cold morning. The mercury is dipping. But will the, uh, will the polls, uh, will the counting start on time at 8 a.m.? There was some talk of the counting being slightly postponed because of the cold weather. Well, uh, it looks like it will be delayed by only by a few minutes, Rajdeep. And as you did mention, yes, it is a very frosty morning. It's still very dark, as you can see in here. I'm outside, in fact, the Chief Minister Omar Abdullah's residence on Gupkar Road. Even if I were to ask my camera person to really zoom in and show perhaps the BSF security vehicle or the uh, CM residence gate, you'll not get a very proper glimpse because of the darkness around here. But uh, clearly, you know, Gupkar Road, in a way, symbolizing also the uh, powerful elite uh, of uh, Srinagar of Jammu Kashmir and particularly in Omar's government which has also been tainted with allegations of serious corruption as far as the CMO are concerned. But yes, you know, all eyes will be of course on the main counting centre in SKICC. We will get you those reports from there as well. Our correspondents will be there. But uh, definitely will be very interesting to watch uh, whether the opinion polls uh, 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 you know, uh, stand right or do they go haywire which seems to be the suggestion here on the ground by a lot of people that I have been talking to. Well, maybe that's Omar Abdullah's wishful thinking that the opinion polls go haywire because at the moment, Omar Abdullah, it is predicted, will possibly be facing defeat in those polls. Ankit Tyagi, on the other hand, uh, I, I, can see, I can see that there is a rising sun there in Jammu at the moment. Is the BJP believing that this rising sun will result in a sweep in Jammu? Is that where the BJP is pinning all its hopes in Jammu? Absolutely, Rajiv. Uh, Rajiv, in fact, uh, right now it's just about 15 minutes for the sunrise here in Jammu and uh, the BJP hectic pile is already in, in the BJP office. All their senior leaders are, uh, are out at the BJP headquarters here in uh, Jammu. Uh, we went to the BJP office and uh, even the president uh, was early and up uh, there. Uh, counting here is expected to start a uh, bang on time at uh, 8 a.m. And out of the 37 seats in Jammu region, already BJP, uh, the people from the BJP and people on the ground are saying it's going to be at least 30 for the BJP. Whether they are able to get that or not, uh, we'll just know in about a couple of uh, hours uh, when the trends uh, start coming in. But yes, uh, BJP is ex extremely optimistic, not only for, uh, for a, a massive uh, show here, but also they are saying that they will be able to get few seats in the, the four se out of the four, at least two seats in the Ladakh region and uh, a, a couple of uh, surprises, they say, in uh, the valley. So of course, uh, BJP is hoping that their power show from 11 seats in 2008 to at least uh, the second largest party in this election is uh, well set on course. Okay, we will wait and see because Jammu is really going to be one of the critical areas in this election. Many say that there are two states in this election. Jammu giving a possibly a different verdict to what will happen in the valley. One more stop that I want to make early in the morning is to Rohit uh, there in Rachi. I don't know what the temperatures in Rachi are, Rohit, at the moment. I can see that the valley is extremely cold. Uh, mercury has dipped there in Rachi itself. Uh, is it as cold as, uh, as the rest of North India? 
Well, Rajdeep, it's a cold morning in Rachi, but the sun has come out, and the big question that the people of Jharkhand today is asking: Will the jinx that is attached with Jharkhand, that no government has completed a five-year tenure, no stable government in the last 14 years, will that jinx be over today? And will BJP finally be able to provide some sort of a government in a stable government in Jharkhand? This is the basic question because more than 10 mammoth rallies that Narendra Modi has done here in Jharkhand, and the question is: Will that rally? Will the Modi mania, will the uh, Narendra Modi wave help BJP form a first stable government in Jharkhand after 14 years of its creation? We will wait and see. Modi's name, of course, will keep coming up through the day as it indeed has come through the year. Is this the year of Narendra Modi and the Lotus? Let's raise that uh, right at the start. Uh, Manisha Priyam, is it is it fair to say that at the end of this long election year, a year when the BJP has won virtually everything? that these two elections in a sense represent the final test of mr modi jharkhand because it's never had a, a stable government and jammu and kashmir because the bjp seems to be making its first serious bid for power should our focus today be largely on the bjp or is this election more than just the bharatiya janata party oh this election is about the people look <laughs> at the people in jharkhand india's poorest battling the cold and in a sense the threat of the naxalites coming out in large numbers and coming out with demands that are their own the right to life itself in in, in jammu and kashmir as well narendra modi no atal bihari vajpay there but look at the people once again defying all kinds of threat differentiating between the agenda of the separatists and asking politicians indeed that give them what they need as the basics of their lives so in both states under different and very adverse circumstances india's poorest and india's most fragile state goes together to reaffirm its faith in india's electoral process so this is indeed about the people yes there's been a craftsman called narendra modi who's worked the political act very well but it is about the people of india that's interesting that's spoken like an academic because as journalists uh, manini we focus on leadership you know i think manisha put it well that it's india's poorest state one of india's poorest states and one one of india's most fragile states if not the most uh, fragile state both voting in large numbers but our focus instead of people has been on personalities is this about mr modi would i be right in saying that this is about the bjp and whether this is the year of the lotus or should we be looking at these two elections very distinctively from what has happened through the rest of the year no no i think both jharkhand and jammu and kashmir are very much part of india and there has been a process in the last one year starting from the time mr modi was announced as the prime ministerial candidate that india has been sort of mesmerized by this phenomenon and i think it it will go down what goes up will come down but this is they, he's still on a high and but jammu and kashmir is a very special case because they were trying to make inroads into the valley and if that happens i think that that will be very significant otherwise sweep doing well in jammu itself is not such a big deal okay so it, it's the valley that you believe will be critical to decide whether the modi wave has actually crossed uh, the jawahar tunnel and moved to the other side but dhananjay joshi you put your neck on the line 43 to 51 is what you are predicting for the state of right. jharkhand right. do you believe that jharkhand is an easier election this time to predict than it has been in the past yeah well yes and because uh, the reported figures are such that the bjp is gaining and the bjp has a substantial lead in terms of vote shares and uh, as far as this election is concerned it's of course about people but i also see this election as a consolidation of the bjp's vote bank in jharkhand beyond its traditional upper caste vote so it's going well beyond that traditional upper caste vote sishadri chari has joined us early this morning i know that as being an old rss man he knows how to get up early in the morning unlike the rest of us who don't know how to get up early in the morning uh, but i want quick comments from all my three panelists before i take my first break starting with you mr chari is this an election which you see as part of this continuum for the bjp in this year politics is about momentum you know there is still the belief that this is a honeymoon period for the prime minister is that how you are seeing this election as an attempt by the bjp to spread itself geographically and establish itself as the national party number 1 <clears throat> i think 2014 can be uh, called as the year of aspirations fulfilling 2015 will be year of fulfilling those aspirations i think there are all major elections are over by 2014 can i turn it around and say 2014 is the year of promises 2015 will have to be the year of performance the yes, people yes. will judge you by performance in 2015 yes. you agree yes. with that this yes, is the year yes. of promises you are calling it aspiration uh, gor 
is it about Kashmiri aspirations today? Is there a sense in the valley that this is a very different election to elections that have been fought so far? Or is it more of the same? I think in terms of the higher voter turnout, yes, it is different. But in terms of, you know, people linking it with, like, people reposing faith in Indian democracy and the, like, larger political problem is over, that is a wrong analysis. You know, the... So we don't just go by turnout. You don't yes. believe... You believe that those who are saying turnout is a sign that Kashmir Valley has turned is, is a wrong way to interpret it? Yes. I think... So uh, why was there a high turnout then? High voter turnout. There are a couple of reasons. You know, many, many factors. One being, like, the Mission 44 Plus of BJP. Mm -hmm. That created a fear among, you know, voters in certain pockets that we have to come out to vote to defeat BJP's plan of Mission 44 Plus. That was one. Number two, like after the floods, you know, uh, there was massive devastation and people wanted, uh, you know, they had seen what NC had done. So they wanted to change and these like local governance issues. So of local it's a governance. mood for change. You're, you're seeing the high voter turnout as a mood for it change is, and possibly not, also a fear of the BJP. No. Fear of the BJP is, is what is being you, suggested. You, you, you call it you call it fear of the BJP, you call it uh, anti Omar Abdullah or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. There is some aspiration. Some people want something. They think uh, Omar Abdullah has not developed, uh, mm -hmm. delivered. Mm -hmm. They don't know if BJP will do it. Mm -hmm. So obviously the people are going to vote for some party or the other. Okay, okay. I, I, I don't know. I'm going to get you after the break because we we, we we must take whatever commercial breaks we have. We have to take in the morning because once the the counting begins, then we will not take any breaks. And the counting we are told will start on time certainly in Jharkhand at 8 a.m. as promised. I feel sorry for all those people who have to wake up then early in the morning lugging all the EVMs. Maybe election shouldn't be held in December after all. Let's take a break. When we return, we'll have plenty more as we look ahead to the final battles of 2014. The two states with the letter J, Jharkhand and Jammu and Kashmir. The question that we will raise today is whether two elections are taking place in Jammu and Kashmir. One for Jammu and the other for the Kashmir Valley. Is that how we should be looking at this election? Who better to answer that than Anuradha Basin of Kashmir time? Is, it the, is that the way to look at this election in Jammu and Kashmir this time as it unfolds through the day? That there is a different election taking place in Jammu to the one in the valley. Gohar has said valley is about anger, valley is about change. Is Jammu also expressing similar sentiments? There are similar sentiments, but I won't agree that there are two different elections. You know, if you uh, otherwise, I, if you go back, the elections have turned around uh, the same way. Different patterns in the valley and different pattern in Jammu region. So it's nothing exceptional this time. Um, but, but the issues yes, are the issues very different in Jammu to the issues in Srinagar, for the example. The aspirations are very different. And uh, this time, the BJP, uh, yeah, you know, created this whole hype about, uh, which was initially started by the Congress, but then the BJP took on about the Hindu chief minister and the Jammu chief minister. And uh, let me take that to Sashadri Chari. Is this about Hindu chief? You know, let's be clear. The BJP did say that what is wrong if there is a Hindu chief minister in Jammu and Kashmir, and then you had the PDP, particularly going public and saying, no, there can only be a Muslim chief minister of of Jammu and Kashmir. The fear always is in Jammu and Kashmir that an election can get easily communalized. That you know, the <coughs> parties of the valley will play the Muslim card, and the parties of uh, Jammu, whether it's the Congress or the BJP, play the Hindu card. No, I, I don't think. The BJP wanted to play the Hindu card. It was not uh, our intention because playing Hindu card mm -hmm. is actually uh, virtually that amounts to giving up the valley. So that was not the issue. The issue was it was in reply to certain elements who raised this issue. So Will BJP have a Hindu chief minister? Does BJP have a Hindu chief minister? We said, what is why? Why do we talk in terms of Hindu and Muslim chief minister? And why should Jammu and Kashmir think that they can't have a Hindu or a Muslim? Hindu deputy chief minister has been there. Sure, there has been, but under there has always been this under tension. NC it has been there. There has and always the been this underlying tension somewhere. I, yes, I think I think they tried. The BJP tried to play very smart. You know, the politics in Kashmir was like about Vajpayee's legacy. In Jammu, it was about Hindu chief minister in Article 370, mm. and in Delhi, it was something else, development, other things. So, Kashmiri people of the valley, they 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 understood that you know BJP's plan, how they were saying different things in different places. Article 370 has no, been no. there since 1950. 
Mm-hmm. This is not the first time that BJP or Jensen is talking about Article 27. The, 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 the sense is, I, 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 the sense is the BJP has a different politics for the Valley and a different for Jammu. You, no. you're probably entitled to that no, in most other parts different. of the country. It's not different Jammu, politics. You can say different strategy. Different and obviously, strategy. obviously, okay. in a in in a place like Maharashtra with 350 seats, yes. you have to have different strategy for every state. Okay, so you're what saying is wrong in it? you're saying it's different strategy. It's different, different strategy okay. for I'm, different I'm, I'm, areas. I, I will allow you to, 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 to put it in those terms because politics is ultimately about winning an election. Yes. So the way you saw to win an election is have a different strategy for Jammu and have a very different one, some would say, for the valley. Let's take another break. We're taking those breaks quick, thick and fast early this morning because we'll have plenty more to discuss once the, the electronic voting booths are open. When I return, I'm going to raise the other big question from the state of Jharkhand. Are we finally ending 15 years of uncertain governments and instable, unstable governments in the state of Jharkhand?